What's up everybody, welcome to Podcast Now, I'm Alex, and in this video I want to talk about a comment that was actually made on my Vince video that I thought was incredibly well said, and I want to kind of talk over it a little bit and talk about if there's anything to this point. So I want to shout this person out, they didn't ask for this, but but here we go, Bye bye Polar, great name by the way, I would have loved to see Vince beat the crap out of Ghostface, the kill was way too easy, the characters fighting back and having the upper hand in slasher films, even for a few minutes, adds so much to tension. That's why I love Sid so much. She always gives Ghostface a physical challenge in every film. Thinking, is she the only character that ha that has? Actually, Vince, Wes, and Cotton's deaths are great disappointments. I think the writers forget that when faced with death, people would literally fight for their lives. Seeing them fighting back brutally would be more satisfying than these brutal, quick deaths. I prefer the chase over the kill, and uh, Scream 5 lacked that for me. I never felt scared because of there wasn't that much suspense. Uh, Tara's opening was great, but they showed it in the trailer, the killer making it inside, which spoiled it. And, you know, I, I really think there's a lot of very good points to that. I don't really know. I have to think about it when this video ends. Like, what am I going to title this thing? <laughs> you know, what, what, what can I summarize in, in just a couple words for the title? But I think that's incredibly well said because I, I really agree. Now, obviously, there are, like, movies movie like there's movie elements right that you can't get away with and certain things have to happen in movies just because they're movies right so I guess what I'm saying is to expect in a screen movie every single character gives the fight of their life right before they they die probably is 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 unrealistic right not that I mean maybe you could do it and maybe it would work but I just feel like from a filmmaking perspective it doesn't seem like something that could ever happen but it is a good point on its own where it's like yeah I think you really can put some of those elements that, that this person is talking about into and let's just say, right, because at this point, we're, what can we really only talk about is the next Scream movie, right? Scream 6 and 7. Can we ever infuse these elements into the future movies? And I think the answer is yes. Now, what I'll say, I want to say something about Wes, because I will say this. I know I was disappointed that Wes died, okay? I was disappointed that Wes died actually so, quote unquote, early in the movie. I thought there was going to be more for him. But in terms of his actual death, I mean, obviously, like, the gore factor was very different than what we've gotten pretty much in, like, any other Scream film, right? It was definitely different. I, I liked it. It was one of, if not the only scenes, uh, maybe besides Tara that in the, in the opening, that had tension, right? I personally think it wasn't overused. I know there's been the argument that the amount of times, right, that he thought he heard something or you think Ghostface is going to appear, like, when he opens the fridge and stuff, right? Like, you think Ghostface is going to be right there when he closes it. I personally liked it because it's like, let's just kind of keep doing it. Let's kind of build this, uh, I don't know, this, again, this tension in the air, and then let's just finally do it where Ghostface is standing behind him uh, when he goes to the door. So I liked all of that. I think that was a good example of the movie doing something different because a lot of the kills the movie were not actually different well the kills themselves they were all actually you know a little bit different from each other obviously Dewey's was pretty different but in terms of the setup a lot of them were very similar to each other which I would say was kind of an overall weakness um in this film but then the actual death itself two things with that number one again the gore element but number two I would argue West did fight for his life and the reason and I've said this before my belief is Amber killed Judy, and then Richie killed Wes. Richie is stronger. Richie's bigger. Richie, I think, is probably better built, or Jack Quaid is better built, uh, than Dylan Minnette. So I would fully believe, and I think, you know, again, like, well, I didn't want him to die, and it's like, well, how's he going to get out of this if he's not going to die? I really think the way they handled it was like, yeah, he was fighting literally as much as he could. He was trying to reach right for, like, the weapon. But it's like he literally couldn't do anything else. He's just trying to hold this knife before it, you know, stabs him. He's got, like, his back up against the wall. There's nothing else he can do. And he really, I would say, put up as much of a fight in that regard as humanly possible. Remember, actually, the idea in the first script is that he was going to run, get Judy's gun in the safe, remember that? And then Richie was going to kind of, like, chase him in there, and they would fight for the gun. And, and he would actually end up winning that strength battle too and Wes would get shot with the gun because Richie would kind of turn the gun on him so that was that was in the first script as well so both times really the strength kind of won and the only reason I'm saying this I, I, I would say I'm not saying like anything negative to the comment or like this is a wrong comment I'm just saying for that part I would probably disagree just in terms of how I felt about it that's all but I do think the overall point stands there is something to being a survivor and when I say survivor I think hopefully when a lot of people say survivor like you don't survive in these films at least right by kind of like hiding in a corner and just hoping like the killer passes you by kills everybody else and you you escape right there normally is some sort of like 
fight you have to go through to kind of prove that you're that survivor, to prove that you're, in a way, better, I don't want to say like better than everybody else, but I guess better suited in that situation, right, than everybody else where you make it out where others wouldn't. And that's a final girl, that's a survivor, that's a final person survivor in any film that's like the leading role, you know, whatever you want to call it, right? And, uh, and so that, but that's normally given to the lead, that's why Sydney obviously has that, but I, I agree generally, I mean, I think that you can have some situations where, where we have our characters kind of fight for their lives. I will say, st strategically, throughout these movies, I think they've done a very reasonably good job at making things believable in that X person can kill Y person. Uh, you even look at to the, uh, you know, the I guess the difference between somebody like a Mrs. Loomis and a Randy. Like, on a normal one-on-one -on -one fight... Could Randy really be taken out like that? Well, well, I guess like that, right? Could he really be taken out on a one-on-one -on -one fight? Well, maybe not necessarily, but she caught him by surprise and she drags him, you know, she picks him up and throws him in the in the truck. He wasn't prepared. The Dewey one, right? I've said it time and time again. Yes, you can argue with him taking the body shots, not the head shot, going back from the elevator. All that stuff was not exactly... It was to set up the kill, right? Or his death, which was a writing thing. And it was, you know, it could have been done, I think, way, way better. I agree. But in terms of catching him off guard when the phone rings I think is more than reasonable I think I think really works so I will say that I, I will say I guess the more I'm talking about it the more I am conflicted I do agree generally with this point I actually agree in this movie that there was a lack of specifically chases I think chasing chase scenes were very much missed in this movie I hope and I think honestly they, they will be back in the next movie considering kind of the the outrage of the fandom which I think was again uh, pretty well deserved uh, you know to, to go after it so I, I do I do think so though because I think by the way in chase scenes you do see that back and forth that struggle right where maybe Ghostface gets the advantage but maybe also the survivor gets the advantage and you can see the survivor whether they're throwing things they're trying to make Ghostface trip over himself or herself right whatever they're doing I think that is more of like at least they're they're not necessarily even fighting back but they're like not giving themselves up immediately which and, and again I will in a way a small way defend this movie because I will say for the Amber kills she used like massive amounts of stabs okay and she would use both hands to to you know again solidify that she's not as strong as some of these people but she would stab a lot and richie really used the element of surprise now richie in my opinion right didn't kill almost anybody he killed wes and he killed uh, in my opinion vince those were the only two and both of them were knife shots you know through the throat and both of them uh, spe specifically vince right very very quick just like a one thing he never saw coming so you know uh, i agree like i think the idea of fighting back and the idea of chases were missed in this movie but also specifically richie's two richie's two i think were done fine you know i'm not a fan of how they used vince right we talked about that in the vince video i think it was way too short i would have liked to have seen the uh the original kill that they had planned for him with like the car and all that stuff but the way they did it i think did solidify like okay well richie's not richie's about getting in and getting out like he's not gonna mess around with all the all of this stuff right he, he wants it to be over very very quickly whereas amber is more than willing to like stab over and over and over again right but she's not as strong and so that leads to that kind of confrontation even with dewey or judy judy stops her for you know a brief second and then she gets the upper hand but i i i guess i would say again i would overall agree with this i think chasing chasing scenes were, were greatly missed, and I hope to see them back in the next movie. Um, and, and hopefully we even get more things with, I mean, Sam had her moments, right? Sam mainly, well, Tara, obviously the opening scene in, in, in Scream 2022 was phenomenal. I thought that was awesome. I thought that built tension. I think it showed a lot of survivor mentality from her in terms of fighting back, and literally not even just fighting back, but just surviving as long as she can or could until the police came, right? So that was, I, I thought that was really, really well done, and I think you could even use that element if you want to have her fight, you know, in the next film. I think Sam obviously had her moments, even when she was attacking Richie, you know, at the end. And then Sydney obviously had a pretty small moment. Sydney and Gail had their moment with Amber. So I think there's room 
to, to go from there. I think we could see longer extended fights or longer extended chases. Now with Tara and Sam, you could give Sydney or Gale another chase thing. You could give them another fight scene. I think we could definitely see more of that um, in future movies. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure, as always, you guys are subscribed to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you guys know when all these videos go up. If you want to follow me anywhere else, all of my social media, as always, is in the description below, along with our Patreon and YouTube memberships. Thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you all on the next video.